Right, it's 2015. If anybody had said to you both in 1969 that you'd be sitting here about to do a gig together, would you believe them? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Please welcome here at Bush Hall, Judy Dibel, Jackie McCauley, Trader Horn. Take it way back to 1969, when this all started. So we thought, well, let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. Because it's now 45 years since the album was out. So um, I thought, time to do it one more time. Julie and I just, just met. And we were just sitting around an apartment, a flat. And we ended up getting a support gig one or two people and eventually we just ended up being offered a record contract and we didn't have many songs so we started off with this one I had written a few years before and they came back. it's called Jenny May Are you coming out to play? I'm all alone and my dad is gone away. I'll be Jesse James and you'll be an Indian. And if we have a fight, I might even let you win, Jenny May. Hi, Jenny May. Jenny Are you coming May. out to play? Jenny May. I'm all alone and my dad is gone away, Jenny May. If you wish, you'll get a silver dish If you hope, you'll get a skipping rope But if you cry, there'll be witches in the sky Jenny May Oh hey, Jenny May Come on out to play Jenny I'm all alone, and my daddy's gone away Jenny May
that's right. Do you think it's fair to say there's even more interest now than there was then? Uh, yes, I think there must be, yes. I mean, it, it's been released and re-released over the years, but uh, we've not done any promotion towards it. And the original copies of the album have sold for a fortune, as people delightedly tell me. And I think that's because you hadn't bought it in the first place. <laughs> but, uh, There's a kind of obvious chemistry between you, which perhaps looking at you separately in separate careers might not be obvious from an objective point of view, but there, are, there is. Uh, could you put that down to anything? Uh, sheer serendipity. Um, there was just a... Uh, Strange, actually, really, because it was, the, it was through another friend of ours, a guy called Pete Sears, that I got sort of jamming with in those days in North Kensington, in a flat in North Kensington. And uh, I think it was Pete, Pete and produced... with Martin Crittenton, who was... because they were both recording for Rod Stewart. So he said, come play. I know this girl singer. Why don't we get the other one? Oh, see what happens, you know. We, I hadn't really planned anything. No. There was nothing set in stone. And uh, we sort of sitting there singing around and jamming around the duties most of the time, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, we, we got a gig. What was the first gig we got? Was it the Fairport thing? It was one of the first, yes, wasn't it? Yes, the first one. By then, Pete Sears had gone off to America and yeah. joined Lee Stevens and had gone <laughs> yeah, on to Before our first gig, tuna. actually. <laughs> yes. That's right, before our first gig. Pete went off to America. He ended up playing with Hot Tuna. Jerry Garcia from Grateful Dead and all kind of other people. Anyway, it was just the two of us. And I don't know who it was, Barry, Barry Taylor, a guy called Barry Taylor. Yeah. He says, ah, why don't you come and do a support gig, you know? So we did. We did as Judy Dibel and Jackie McAuliffe, and we started. And we did, I think, a few gigs around then, and we sat around thinking, well, we should have a name for the band one day. And that's when John Peel came up with the idea of yeah. Trader Horn. We thought, fantastic. What does it mean? It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Did we go to him and say, could, buy, could, could, could he buy us an auto hop? And by the way, can you think of a name? Yeah. <laughs> Probably something like that. And it was the name of his nanny. Uh, Mrs. Horn or something, they, got they called Horn, her Florence yes. Horn, that's right. Yeah. And they called her Trader Horn, affectionately of course, you know. We just thought it was a great name. So then we had a name, and then we, Barry Taylor again, introduced it to another guy called Barry Murray, who was a producer from Pi Records, was starting a new label, and signed us up. So basically, they got us together, they give us a name, <laughs> and they <laughs> signed us up. So we made Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, yes, are lovely. You are lovely. Aren't they lovely? I forgot a bit then, didn't I? <laughs> My 45 years later, what can you expect? <laughs> <laughs> this song's called uh, Growing Man. And for some reason, it's gone on YouTube and all around the place as a groaning man. <laughs> I've never checked it out. <laughs> it's one of those things. But well, never mind. Is it you, my traveler, coming home to me? Oh, I am a weary man, I guess I think it's me. Paint for me a picture of the city in your way. Oh, you will not see no colors, just fifty shades of gray. Where did you go to? And what did you feel? I felt the city burn away, but the flames I could not see. Did you meet good friends in your city home? But no money buys you friendship, and so I lived alone. Don't ask me why I'm happy. Don't tell me I look sad I can't help it, I'm a growing man A 
everyone else started this band. We were just there, yes. and they got us gigs. These we people had, got had us. Gigs. I mean, actually, everybody liked us. They liked, didn't they? They just liked having us around <laughs> the place for, for some reason. And uh, we ended up getting this record day from Barry Murray from this new label, Dawn Records. And uh, I said, well, that's great. Now we're going to make an album. And uh, well, we don't actually have all these instruments. And Jackie went, ooh, 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 and used everything there. But then he, we said, well, we, have, we need material. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he said, I'm writing anything. But then we needed a direction. Now, I came from a, a R&B blues thing. And this, so it's not going to be like that. The change and duty comes from the folk side of things. So there was no such thing as fusion in those days. So we just came up with this idea of these kind of songs. Collision, yeah. I would say. A collision That's a good song. idea. Yes. That's a good, very good word. Things come to a kind of natural. I think, I think it's evolved. You know, the, the, we never set out to be Trader Horn. Yeah. It just all happened. But the, the reason we kind of split was really, was really I, I got exhausted by the constant travelling because the the agency we had sent us all over the country uh, with no no plan. So you know, you'd be doing Aberdeen one day and then. Plymouth the next, and then to Belfast, and then across. And Jackie was doing most of the driving, or he was doing all the driving because I couldn't drive. Um, so we'd end up at gigs absolutely exhausted. Morning came and morning went All of my life my loving was spent I looked at my window too lazy to yawn It worried me finding my lady had gone Oh yes, that suddenly be Golden sand swept in from the sea all the current interest in your work, do you think perhaps splitting up after one album was a very, very good career move? <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. I suppose it was really. Well, yeah, that's but hard to say, planned, isn't it? That wasn't just... planned either. Yeah. Well, Judy was right. One of the last gigs we did, we broke down, didn't we? Yeah. We broke down outside RAF Hendon, I think it was. No, it was uh, North Holt. Oh, North Holt, yeah. Yes. One of those places. We, and all the stuff was in the car and it was snowing. And we just had to leave the car with everything in it. And we had to walk up a mile to this station somewhere yeah. I was marching up the road like this and I came back the following day and the car was just buried in snow but all our gear was still yeah, in it I managed to get it home but I think that was a breaking point yeah. you know we were just getting really exhausted absolutely wrecked yeah. you know, but there, was, but, uh, there was no kind of backup it was just you know you, you're due there at that point and uh, you, you know here's your yeah. here's your weekly wage <laughs> it was those things that we got we started doing all these TV things, you know, there was six o'clock magazine shows because there was just the two of us from that kind of scene. Yeah. So <laughs> he started putting in all of these uh, six o'clock news after the news sort of magazine shows. We did those all over the country. We did, yeah. Everything. You dead horsemen in my dreams, 
There I identify every frenzied steed And they captured a mermaid who cried bitterly And drove her people back, back into the sea yeah. Is your memory of that time of people being mutually supportive and helping each other? Or was there a lot of competition between them? No, no, not for us. Not for, uh, not for us. They were really great to us. All the bands were just great to us. Yeah. Really were. The bands were fine. Honest. I mean, it's not, not a problem because everybody was chasing up down the, lo the motorway. Was there a motorway then? There was, just. yeah. There was, there was the M1, <laughs> I think that was it. Um, I have to ask you, did you at any point go to the Blue Boar motorway Greasy Spoon, which was the, uh, oh, the yeah. famous Watford one for the Gap. Yes. Yes, everybody went there. Oh, I forget. Oh, yeah. But remember, it was usually at three o'clock in the morning, mm. so who, whoever else was in there, I would not have been able to recognise because I would have been 90% asleep. Oh, yeah. Trying to eat a fried egg, dripping it all down me. Um, <laughs> I get caught with that one coming back down. Right. What for a gap? Thank God we're just outside London. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, oh, we did all at the Blue Boar, famous. I mean, we go in there at three o'clock in the morning, be two or three bands, yes. <laughs> baked beans on toast, and everyone. Yeah. It's rock and roll. Absolutely, <laughs> you know. It's, 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 as um, John was said, there's no iconic figures in those days. They were just all working musicians. So everybody kind of mucked together. There was no kind of con it wasn't a competition like it is now, but that's, I think that's created by, by mm -hmm. programs like, uh, well, I'm not even going to mention it. No, <laughs> television, certain television programs. Mm -hmm. It's not a competition. Real music's not a competition, you know. And actually, when you're on the road and you meet people who are in, in bands and you meet them all the time, they're not, they're not famous people that you go, oh, look, no. there's, you, they are your, your friends that you meet mm. at night. Um, and say, have you been to that gig before? And they go, yeah, it was nip rubbish. <laughs> um, you know, you swap stories. It was, it was, it was peer uh, people rather than um, famous. Do you think there was a, a actual point where that changed? I don't know because I stopped really uh, after I'd, I'd left Trader Hall, and I sort of got out of music completely for thirty-five years. So. Um, possibly that was when it changed. <laughs> I, I think, I, th I think in the seventies definitely. Mm. Things started to change because I believe these bands started to become iconic, and uh, records were, companies were looking for similar type of things. They weren't looking for new. That I mean, they weren't looking for new young mm. acts or whatever to to uh, so to become more corporate. Or, or, yeah, Cor corporate. Yeah. But um, okay, well, I think we'll wrap it up there and let you. Go and get ready. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hope it was some yeah, help. Yeah, it was lovely. <laughs> we used to 
yesterday was better than today Yesterday was when I went away